Hi, Teacher Mask is here again to discuss the science of human movement. This is our Physical Education Movement Enhancement Unit 2 Lesson 1. Are you ready? May I remind you of our video class orientation. Prepare your setup, pay attention to each slide, take note of the topic you want to know more about so that you can research for more ideas in the internet after. Typographical error may appear when you search for the correct words. Focus on the lesson. This is a student and teacher friendly video. You can use this as your reference. You can play pause this video. This only contains a learning topic, no activity, no assessment, and no evaluation. This is an educational video. Movement enhancement is one of the most important course to develop and understand the scientific basic movements to help the students to be aware of physical literacy, which help an individual to move competently and confidently in all types of environments. This course is being offered to prepare the students for the advanced learning of movement. The type of movement that can be produced at the synovial joint is determined by its structural type. The human body movements are a movement of a body segment towards the midline of the body. Circumduction is a movement where the joint is the pivot and the body segment moves in a combination of flexion, extensions, adduction, and abduction. The second joint gives the good range of movement at an individual joint. Movement kinds are generally paired with the opposite side of the other. Upright stance with upper limbs to the other side of the body and palms facing forward. There are two components of the body that cause human beings to move. First, the skeletal system. The skeleton provides a strong internal framework that supports the body and provides protection for vital organs. These bones meet the joints, the majority of which are freely movable, making the skeleton flexible and mobile. The appendicular skeleton or the also the ischial skeleton that identifies the parts of the body. The major bones and bone group is composed of the following. First, the bone of the head and that is the skull and equals to 29 parts. The vertebral column that is the vertebrae, there is 26 parts. The seven cervical parts is also indicated, the 12 thoracic, the 5 lumbar, sacral, and cosigial vertebrae. The functions of the skeletal system. The physiological functions. First, it provides a site for blood formation. Second, serves as storehouse of calcium which is essential for nerve conduction, blood clotting, and energy formation. And the third, it plays a role in our immune function. The bone also serves as the framework of our body. It is also the supporter of our muscles. Now here are the structural functions. First, it gives support to the body. Second, it protects the delicate organs in the body such as the intestines, the heart, the liver, and all parts of the stomach. Third, bones are rigid lever of locomotion. The bones gives us the ability to move all the parts of the body with the support of the muscles. The skeleton is divided into two groups. First, the appendicular skeleton. This is composed of the upper extremity and the lower extremity. The second is the ischial skeleton. This is composed of the skull, ribs, trunk, vertebral column, and pelvic. For the appendicular skeleton, we have the skull, mandible, clavicle, scapula, humerus, ulna, regis, carpals, and metacarpals. We have also the sternum, ribs, vertebral column, and sacral. For the lower part of the skeleton, it composes 
other cassettes, femur, patella, tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. So we have an example of anterior view that is frontal and the back view and that what is called posterior view. The calcium is important nutrient for the bones. This is the whole body parts of our skeleton. Now here are the factors influencing bone health. First, the heredity. Heredity is an important determinant of bone mass density or BMD. This is a limiting factor on the amount of BMD an individual can attain. The second is nutritional status. Nutrition is important in maintaining bone health. Calcium is also important nutrient for the bones. The third is the hormonal status. The hormone estrogen plays an important role in attaining bone mass. And the third is the activity level. Children and adolescents should participate in high impact activities of the bone development. Now here are the parts of the extremities. For the pectoral girdle, we have clavicle 2, scapula 2, humerus 2. For the upper extremities, we have the radius 2, ulna 2, 16 carpals, 10 metacarpals, 2 patella, the kneecap, the tibia 2, tarsal 14, the bones in the ankle, the metatarsals 10, long bones in the foot that are concave to the plantar and lower surface, and the phalanges 28. The phalanges are the 28 bones of the toes and the fingers. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. This is Teacher Mask signing off. Happy studying and happy learning.